Welcome to how to change a harp string. I've already completed step one off camera, which is drag your lever harp up from the basement. Now that I've done that, I can determine what octave my missing string is. In Premier Brand strings, they start at a zero octave, um, which is quite a bit higher than my lever harp goes. A zero is being the high end of your harp, and then the higher end numbers octaves 5 and 6 are at the lower end of your harp. So you can see here that's the second octave, this is octave 3, and then octave 4 is where that E string is missing for me. So I'm going to pull out my fourth octave E, and if I have any question about whether or not that's the right string, which I always will, you're going to pull out, find the end of the string, and compare its thickness to the remainder of string you have left. So I can see here that they are exactly the same, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. If at any point you're missing a string, like let's say I didn't have a fourth octave E, I could use its neighbor to replace it with, so I could use fourth octave D. I, in theory, could use fourth octave F, also the thickness would be okay, but because that's a colored string, I would not use it. So for instance, if you're missing a third octave A, I could use a third octave G to replace it, or a third octave B to replace it. While not ideal, it won't damage your harp at all to do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the knot for changing your string. I'm going to show you with a red string because I think it's a little easier to see. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to show you this in a right-handed way. Firstly, I'm going to make a loop. So this loop is going to have its inside edge toward me. Hold that with my finger and thumb, and then I'm going to make a loop with the left side. I'll show you that again. So that loop is going to go in towards the first loop. Hold that with my finger and thumb. The left loop is going to go over top of the right loop. How are you going to do that? Instead of going inside toward the loop, you're going to turn it away from the first loop and then put it over top. I'm going to hold that all in place while I pull the left end, which is going to tighten the knot over top of both of our loops. I like to hold it in this kind of funky way. Um, you can hold it in any way that works for you. Now that we have this, we have room to put in our anchor. So I'm going to slide my anchor in that hole, hold that all in place, and pull that shut. You're going to want to pull really, really hard so that it gets as tight as possible. If you want this top loop to be smaller, all you have to do is push it towards the right side. That way, it can be a smaller loop and it'll fit better in your sound box. So now that you're here, we're going to want to tighten it a little more. So make another loop on the left side and put that over the entire thing. When you tighten it, you'll be left with a double knotted loop. Really pull on it. You can tell I'm pulling, pulling out quite hard. And that's what you should be left with. If you have any excess on the end, make sure to cut that off before you put it in your sound box. So there's my missing string hole. I'm going to put my hand in the sound box and thread it through from the front. Pull it out the back. The reason I'm going to do that is because it's much easier to tie this knot once it's already been threaded through than to try to tie it and then thread it through the back where you can't really see anything. So here we go, here's where I'm tying the knot again. This one's a little bit thicker than that other string I showed you, um, but I still need an anchor. And how you can tell if you need an anchor is by checking the surrounding strings that are still there. So I saw that the string above and below it still had anchors on them, so I'm going to add an anchor to my string.
we can thread that through from the front and just pull and it'll slide right on in. You want to sort of tug on it a little bit to make sure that that knot is secure. So here we are at the top of the harp. I want to use my tuning key to make sure I turn the peg so that the hole is facing up and down so that I can thread straight through the bottom to the top. So once my hole is facing top and bottom, I'm going to take the end of my string and thread it on through. Once you have it threaded, you want to make sure that your string is inside of the lever and sitting on the front of your peg. This way it's matching all of the other strings, and when you use the lever, it'll actually interact with the string. So not in front and not behind, but inside the lever and on the front of the peg. Okay, so here's the part I've always had trouble explaining verbally which is why I'm really glad I have this visual. So I'm going to tuck the string behind the peg so that it comes out in front and creates this loop. So you're going to thread it behind the peg towards the front of the harp and create a loop. As I'm pulling it tight here, I want to make sure that because it's going to fall off that tuning peg, that you push it back onto where it belongs. Here I've just pulled my string out to the side toward my left so that it is pulling itself tight. That part's really important because now that I'm going to start tightening it, it's going to lock itself in place. So when I start tightening the string by tuning it away from me, it's going to cross over itself, holding itself in place with tension. Now you can see here, I'm going to push it inside towards my right side so that it coils in toward the harp. If you let it coil in the opposite direction, when you continue to tune, the string will fall off the peg completely and you'll have to start over again. So make sure that it's coiling to the right, in towards the harp. You can see as I am tuning it up, the coil is actually coiling in toward the harp. I'm going to make sure that my string is in the right position the entire time. Now that my coil is in place, I actually get to start that tuning process. So as I go, once I have about two coils in there, I'm going to make sure that I push on the string a lot to loosen it while I'm tuning it. You, this can also be achieved by just plucking the string really hard continuously as you're tuning it. I like to check to see how close I am by plucking the octave below so that I can hear it, and also the strings next to it so that I can compare. I know that it's a little bit flat if I can compare it to the octave below it, but you could also use a tuner during this process to see. tuned my entire harp before putting this one in, so I know that all of the other strings are in tune, and when I'm comparing this string to them, it will be in tune. This part's really a slow and steady. It's going to continue to go flat after you've tuned it up, and over the next few days you're going to have to tune it back into place probably twice or three times a day. Uh, well, until it trains itself to be at the right tone. Here we are at the very end. So I'm going to use my wire cutters, which are a little bit safer than scissors, although you can also use scissors, to cut off the excess at the top of the string. And now I have more string for next time. I'll put that away in my bag and then back in order in my collection. And there you have it. Please let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this was a little bit better of a guide than I've been able to do in the past, and I will see you soon. Bye!